It's James here. And the other day we were having a coaching call with a bunch of managers and it was actually on coaching. And so I asked the question to the group, what do you find the most difficult when coaching your staff? And someone mentioned that I find it most difficult to coach my staff on performance when their performance is being affected by something outside of their control and outside of my control. And so I said, okay, well, tell me more. Well, it turns out that their, their employee, uh, wife had just had a baby. And so they were in that baby fog, right? Where getting no sleep for those of you who are parents, you know what that's like <laughs> up in the middle of the night, watching infomercials, trying to get this little child back to sleep. Well, anyways, he was in the middle of that and it was affecting his performance, making errors, uh, not doing what he should be doing or what he's, what he's normally been able to do. So anyone would look at that and, and especially a parent, and that would make sense. But the mistake that she was making was that she was assuming that because that was a situation that there was really not much she could do. And some might look at that like that's amazing empathy, but really that's, that's empathy gone wrong. So we dove into that. And if you're ever in a situation like this where you have an employee and their performance is being affected by something, uh, maybe it's a life event, maybe a, a Maybe a parent is ill. Maybe one of their ch children are in the hospital. These, these things are, are tough situations. So how do you handle that as a manager? Do you just throw expectations out the window? Uh, maybe in rare cases, but in the case of somebody having a baby, uh, you still have to go and manage that conversation because you have to manage performance. And yes, you can do it with empathy without uh, making excuses for somebody just because maybe they're really tired. So. In a situation like that, what you would want to do is you would sit down with that employee, let's just say his name is Steve, and get into a conversation with Steve. And of course, because you're a good manager and you have empathy and you probably know already what's going on with just their lives, uh, you might ask the question, Steve, do you think, because you've been tired, as you've mentioned, do you think this has affected your performance at all? Now, he might say no. And if he does, then that's okay, that's the next conversation. The next conversation is to show him uh, the gap, right? To show him where performance has lagged and you need observable evidence for that, whether that's mistakes made or uh, whatever KPI that he's responsible for is, is behind. Uh, but typically he's probably going to say, uh, yeah, you know, I've, I've been super tired and I, I know it'll be fine, but this has just been a rough patch which you get, right? You understand you're empathetic about that. But here's the thing. What you want to do still is maintain the standard. Now, some bosses might just come in and say, look, I know you're tired. I had a baby too, but you just need to figure this out and get this done, right? That's not wrong to say. It's just not the greatest thing to say. And so here's a better approach from a coaching perspective is that you're gonna ask Steve, okay, Steve, I totally get it that you're tired. I've had a baby too before, and I know that's just a rough time. At the same time, here's, what, here's where we need performance. Like in other words, we need to get these things done and we can't have this many errors. So my question to you is, how are we going to close this gap? Because we can't wait for two months when the baby starts sleeping through the night before we restore performance. So I'm open to ideas. Uh, maybe, maybe we need to get somebody to cover one area for you, or I'm not sure. But what I'd like you to do is I want you to think about this and then let's reconvene tomorrow for a few minutes and tell me what you've come up with. Now, the reason we do this is because we are, this is, this is practicing autonomy with that employee. We are trusting them enough that they have the intelligence, that they have the, the, the drive and the wisdom to go figure out this problem. We're understanding why there's a problem, but we're still saying we need to hold the line. And so why don't you think about ideas and come back and talk to me the next day? Now, when you go and talk with Steve the next day, you're going to want at least some ideas. Now, he might come in and say, yeah, I thought about it. I just literally can't think of anything until uh, I get more sleep. Okay. If he says that, then you're going to have to basically say, okay, well, that's not good enough. So let's put our heads together and talk about this. But typically he'll probably come back with a couple of ideas. Some might be good. Maybe some are not good. Uh, maybe he throws in the idea like, what if I came in an hour later that would just help me get some extra sleep? I think I'd be fresher and I could, I think that would solve most of the problems. 
Now, if that's a good solution, then great, go with it. Or maybe he's going to say, you know, if I could just offload this one thing, uh, this really takes a lot of brain power that I feel like I don't have right now. And so if we could offload that for me for a couple of weeks and have someone cover, that would be amazing. And maybe that's a possibility. But in other words, what happens is you're working as in a sense, in tandem as a partner, but you're expecting him to lead the process, right? You're the catalyst to make sure that it's going to happen, but the message is clear. We need to get these things done and we can't have this many errors, but I know you're tired. So what are we going to do? Right? And we're leaving that, we're pushing that back onto him to figure that out. And as he does that, and trust in people's strength, trust in their resilience, as he does that, he's going to come up with some solutions and then go ahead and run with them. Here's the thing. As he makes those adjustments, and maybe you're going to have to help out with some of them, but as he does that and, his, and performance starts going back up, which is what you need, at the same time, well, he's going to feel great about himself. And at the same time, he is going to really respect you as a boss that even though uh, this is the situation, you believed in enough of him and his strength to uh, make sure that he was still going to be able to get that done. All right. Sometimes we sometimes we want to be uh, too empathetic. And it's because honestly, it's because we don't want to push people and people want to be pushed but we just got to do it the right way. So anyways, next time you have an employee that their performance is suffering because of some life event, it doesn't mean that you just uh, accept that, right? How can you hold the line? How can you get them to hold the line, work together to come up with a solution? When you do that, everybody wins.